Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. And um, as you've all already uh, seen, you know, probably already seen or heard about this uh, collapse, okay, the collapse of the Baltimore Bridge. And um, when you watch the video, you know, it's pretty much like the whole bridge, you know, it goes down. It's not a, it's not like a, just a small portion of it, okay? Now, um, I want to go through this article because there are certain parts, aside from the, the actual collapsing of the bridge, which apparently there were certain cars on there that got plunged into the water, you know, when this, um, when this bridge collapsed, but also what are the aftermath effects, okay? Because um, they, I believe they said that the reason it, it, it crashed, uh, the, the, the bridge collapsed was because a ship crashed into it, you know? So, I mean, <laughs> that's interesting in itself, but let's read a little bit and, and then go through as we read. Uh, so the headline reads, Watch Live Biden to Deliver Remarks on Baltimore Bridge Collapse, Paralyzing Major U.S. Port. That's the part right there. Okay, with all of these things, there's the immediate, the immediate, um, you know, devastation or damage. And then there's the ripple effects or the domino effect, which is which really, that's where, you know, the, 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 the more most of the damage lies is in the aftermath you know like an earthquake is bad the aftermath is is in oftentimes worse right like um when there's you know if there's a cyber attack if there's you know something of that sort if there's a power outage the initial impact is bad but what's worse is the uh you know the time after you know the aftermath of it so let's read a little bit about this uh, major port that is now going to be affected and what does that mean for you and you ready let's see so it says here the current issue revolves around an emerging disruption in mid-atlantic supply chains the major east coast port is now paralyzed due to the mangled bridge blocking the only shipping lane in and out of the harbor. So it's very interesting how ships always go through here and out of nowhere, you know, now, and, and this just happens to be one of those bridges that, like it says, is is um, now blocking the only shipping lane in and out of that harbor, which is, you know, a major, a major harbor, right? On the East Coast. So, um, Let's keep reading. Bloomberg reports that the U.S. automotive supply chain uh, will be disrupted. Data shows that uh, Mazda, Motor, and Mercedes-Benz, Subaru of America, Mitsubishi, Motors of North America, and Volkswagen Group have the most exposure to the port. Let's keep reading. It says it, uh, it's a large port with a, lo a lot of flow through it. So it's going to have an impact, John uh, Lawler, Ford Motor CEO's chief financial officer, said Tuesday. Lawler continued, we'll work on the workarounds. We'll have to divert parts to other ports along the East Coast or elsewhere in the country. Now, the reason this becomes such, you know, so burdensome is because, well, one, this shows the, the if, if this is, uh, let's, let's take this as maybe, let's say we, we take the cover story as what it is, right? Which is, um, you know what, the, the bridge just happened to collapse. That, that goes to show you how terrible your infrastructure is. Like, and when I say that, what I mean is it's, it's worn out, okay? It's worn out because this is a pretty big bridge, okay? Hey. This is a pretty big bridge over here in order, uh, you know, to, to have collapsed like that. And, and imagine... Imagine if you were on that bridge in a car and all of a sudden this joint starts collapsing, you know, and you're going down with it. That's not a, you know, that's not an experience that most people would, would like to have. Uh, anyway, the problem is that with this, with, with this part blocked, if you have to try and reroute everything through the remaining um, ports or other parts, you know, what that does is, 
uh, what I, what that does is that it now puts a burden on those other uh, uh, avenues of transportation, okay, which basically slows everything down in general. But it's sort of like a best effort attempt. Uh, earlier, console energy shares plunged nearly 10%, the most since October, as the bridge collapse will affect its massive coal terminal, which is served by CSX trains. And, I mean, also, it's not just the, the, the water that's blocked, there's the actual road itself, right, the bridge itself. Now, I mean, who knows, this might not be the, the only one. Maybe, maybe you might hear of another bridge that collapsed, you know, which might cause even more turmoil. But we got to watch and see. A major sugar refinery owned by American Sugar Refining Inc. warned its Domino Sugar Refinery only has six to eight weeks of raw sugar supplies as the blockage affects ships moving in and out of the port. A major cruise ship terminal... Um, the, the supply chain snarls has sent major logistics companies scrambling across the U.S. Uh, East Coast on Tuesday afternoon. Our first priority is engaging clients to make plans for containers that were originally routed to Baltimore that will be discharged at other ports on the east, eastern seaboard. Paul uh, Brashear, vice president of Drayage and intermodal for ITS Logistics told CNBC. So now you start to rely more on these other, you know, these other ports. And, you know, if something happens to those ports, now you're really screwed. And guess what? That'll affect not just, you know, it, it, like the, the thing is a lot of people tend to look at these things as though they're like so, so far away from you. Like it just doesn't affect you at all. Why do you think they, they, they build bridges? <laughs> you know, they build bridges to make transportation easier, to make your life easier. So one way or another, there is something that you use in your day to day life that depends on this this infrastructure or these methods that they've built in order to allow your daily life to continue. So people think, well, the only like I'm good. I wasn't on that bridge. But what about what comes after and how it affects you? OK, when everything is interconnected, one break somewhere is going to have a ripple effect that's going to affect you on the other end. Uh, these diverted volumes will impact the ports of New York slash New Jersey, Norfolk and the south southeast. And we have to prepare trucking and transload capacity to get that freight to its intended network. So you can definitely expect delays, uh, because when I was reading this earlier, they were saying that. You know, that, that debris is, is, is there in now, as of right now, it's indefinite, right? Because they have to uh, triage and, and, and like prioritize, right? Which things are higher priority before which things. Um, so it says here, an unclassified report from the DHS National Operations Center says the container ship lost propulsion before it rammed the Francis Scott Key Bridge. But I mean, hey, you know, it is what it is. But you would think that they would build these bridges, you know, sturdy enough to where you could account for a situation like this, you know, because things happen. But hey, nonetheless, it is what it is. So let's take a look here. Um, here's a video of the incident. Video seems to show repeated power losses on ship just before it destroyed Francis Scott Key Bridge. So you can see that ship. I mean, that's a pretty massive ship, too. Think about it. So I guess it kind of makes sense. And you can see cars going on that bridge, right? And it's too late. And they have no idea what's happening. Right. As far as they know, there's just a, a ship that's, that's that's moving along and oh, now they're not moving along. Boom. Hits that collapsed. 
whole thing down just like that. Gone. And it really goes to show you that when the Lord, you know, really unleashes hell upon this place, it's literally going to be just like that. It doesn't it, like that right there, you know, regardless of orchestrated or set up, like let's let's assume this was like some regular organic situation. The ship just happened to lose power. By the time they were able to get it back, it was too late. How easy is how easy is it for the most high to set that up? Beyond. Okay. Now, in comparison to what's really about to go down, a, a bridge collapse is really nothing. Okay. But like I said, because everything has been so, you know, interconnected and there's a heavy dependence on that, you know, because remember, like today's society, everything is centralized. So that means that if you want to get groceries, you, you actually have to go to a grocery store. <clears throat> In most of your cities, you got to go to a grocery store to get groceries. You want this, you got to go to this store to get this, right? And then that means that in order for it to appear in your grocery store, somebody got to bring it there. And if somebody got to bring it there, that means that they need a way to, to bring it. See, so now because everything is centralized, it's not like you got your local farmer next to you go down there or you can trade, you know, you know, this neighbor uh, uh, makes this so you can and you make this. So you take a little bit of this to them. They give you a little bit of that. No, you go to the grocery store. So if the 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 the, um, the truck that's supposed to transport the, these things to the grocery store can't do it because the path is supposed to take is gone. You're affected because because things are so centralized, one issue in one place you know especially if it's like a foundational area has a trickle down effect and it affects all of us um <clears throat> let's see right so it says here uh bloomberg's brendan murray explains how the collapsed bridge blocking the only shipping lane in and out of the port of baltimore is about to spark a supply chain crisis across the mid-atlantic an economic disruption along the U.S. East Coast is unfolding with potentially tragic human consequences after a container ship struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, sending nearly the entire roadway structure crumbling into the water. So this is this is like an example, right? Imagine if uh, this place is hit with an EMP or imagine if they say, oh, hypothetical, right? This eclipse happened alongside that. There was some heavy solar flares. The, the sun emitted some radio waves that were so strong it fried our systems. It was like it was like an EMP on steroids. Once you lose power, similar to how that that um, that ship lost power, guess what? These situations that 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 ship crashed into that bridge is just one example of things that could happen. Because imagine if an EMP hits. At, the, at that point where there's a ship that is heading in this area and a situation like this happens. Now, an EMP has resulted in a bridge that's collapsed. And a plane that's about to take off now falls and crashes into the airport. Now, if you were waiting for your next plane, you're done. Okay? And then all of a sudden, planes are falling from the sky. It happens. You know? So, like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta always think far down you know in in the in the in the picture you know think far ahead like what are the the effects and and it doesn't matter how smart you are you can't predict every single possible outcome and that's why we put our faith and trust in the Sham Yahu Shai because there's always going to be something that you don't see coming and if you don't if you don't have the protection of the heavenly father because he's the one bringing it you're done All right let's actually get this real quick Get a quick precept. Um, Proverbs, I think it's 18 and 10. The name of the Lord Yahweh is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. And so it's likening the name of the Lord onto a strong tower. So we don't actually, and here's the, here's the benefit. With this tower, it's with you everywhere you go. It's not like it's in one location. Like, like if you go back to, to the, the, the time period of the siege of Jerusalem, you know, by the Romans, you had people fleeing from Galilee and up north all running down into Jerusalem because it, it, it was a defense city and they could, they could, you know, hole up in there for a while. 
it was a strong tower, so to speak. But the, the name of the Lord isn't a place that you got to go and run towards to try and get there. And if you don't get there in time, you're screwed. It's with you always. You know, you call on the name of the Lord and it's like an instant boom defense. So the scriptures also tell us that a prudent man uh, uh, looking for unto his going, right? He foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. How are we hiding ourselves? We're hiding ourselves in the tower, the strong tower that is the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And for those of you that are playing games, you're not going to have a, a, a place or a way to hide yourself and you'll get caught up out there. Imagine you're driving on a bridge like this case and it just so happens that when this bridge collapsed, your car was on it. Your car plunged into the water. You're trying to get out and for some reason, your seatbelt is now stuck. And you're losing oxygen. Your car is sinking. Your seatbelt is stuck. You're trying to remove it and you can't remove it. And now you, you, you're sinking down in this water right here. See how the Lord can really, really set you up? He can mess you up so bad, you know, you, hey, anyway. Um, the immediate priority of the rescuers is finding people who may have been on the bridge, either working or driving across. The ship, the Singapore registered Dolly, was operated by Charter Company Synergy Group and is time, uh, and is time chartered by uh, Maersk, uh, carrying mayor's customers cargo and this is also a highlight of how you know how the lord can break forth judgment at any moment regardless of how how major or minor it is a secondary concern in the days ahead will be tough questions about the effect on business commuters holiday travelers and the economy across the region so you got crime you got natural disasters you have <coughs> diseases you have uh, economic turmoil and then you got these these uh you know uh, edge cases that come in and crash into that and make exacerbate these already like pre-existing conditions even more the port of baltimore the biggest handler of u.s imports and exports of cars and light trucks looks to be out of commission indefinitely you know what that means that means that it's just out of out of commission until further notice. And definitely means it's going to stay like that until something changes. The resulting bottleneck could accelerate a shift of goods through West Coast ports. Another crucial question, which which other ports have spare capacity to handle the row row vessels that carry automobiles if Baltimore is closed for an extended period? You have a tweet here, Tracy Alloway. One very big logistical complication in the Baltimore Bridge collapse is that the Francis Scott Key Bridge was the main route for hazardous materials, which aren't allowed to be transported through the tunnels. So, and once again, this is one of those examples of things that people don't really think about, but they actually have a very major impact. Why do they specify specific routes for hazardous materials to be transported through? Why aren't they allowed through tunnels? There's a reason for that, right? But the average individual doesn't, why would, what, what would prompt somebody to go and look into that, to find that out? So it isn't until something happens and then things that the, the, the normal processes of, of how things are supposed to go are stopped that you then start to realize these things here that you overlook in your day-to-day -day life. You're like, tell me, hazardous material. So, oh, shit. That, I, oh, wow. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, you, you never had a reason to. But now you're kind of forced to. So, I mean, we're going to see what they're going to do. But it, it's just like, it takes one. That's the domino effect. One hits another, hits another, hits another. And maybe you're looking at the first five dominoes. And there's like 20, 20 more down, the, you know, down after that. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Mm. Okay, okay. It says here, authorities are heavily downplaying the risk of foul play here. We don't see anything that relates to that at this time. It's an open investigation, but there's nothing that points to that. Uh, Waiterfeld said, or Waiterfeld said, no indication as of now of nefarious intent per the White House. Somebody else says, this is a, 
In my opinion, this was a potential cyber attack. Notice the ship lights go off before steering into the column. Hmm. What's this? Sonar indicates that several vehicles are in the... Yep. Good stuff. Let's see. Are in the water where temperature was about 47 degrees. Jeez. That's not too good. <clears throat> Is the U.S. under attack? Cargo ship slams into France. So now you see what, like, where the minds of the people are. But, but to to a degree, this is good for those behind the scenes. If if the the second something small happens, the civilians or the citizens are already thinking, "Yo, this might have been a potential cyber attack. Yo, this might have been a, a terrorist attack. Yo, this might have been instigated by a foreign country." Guess what? That's that's pretty much they got you where they want you. Because they don't need to come and do any work to say, hey, um, this might have been X, Y, and Z, which is what they want you to think at some point when they set up some other major event. They already got your mind over there. So now they can set up something real big and they can say, boom, hey, this was this was done by X, Y, and Z, and people are not gonna be surprised. Look, breaking mass casualty ship collides with Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. This comes just days after the Crocus terror attack in Moscow, which was widely blamed on the West. See, so, and I mean, with the help of uh, uh, agent provocateurs, they influence the minds of the people and they get you right where they want you. You know, so yeah, there's a lot of talk about this. Uh, and like I said, you see how much... You know, people are looking into this, and this is a bridge collapse. How much more for, for the things the Lord has, has pronounced against this place, i.e. the time of Jacob's trouble? So truly, it's going to be a time like never before. Anyway, with that, I'm going to end it here. Lord willing, that was edifying to the elect. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Until next time, Shalom.